Hello, I hope you're doing well. My name is Yunis Adubago and I'm a chef in Uganda. I own a string of restaurants, a host of restaurants in our city in Kampala and just outside the outskirts of the city. And I'm going to open up more and more restaurants. Yes, by training, I'm a civil engineer, but I love to cook. And so I have done a few courses in culinary delights and I like to also craft my own recipes and I come up with my own menus and I love what I cook. Today, I'm going to teach you to do two things that I believe we are going to do in the shortest time possible. One of it will be roast butter vegetables that we are going to serve with the main dish that I call goat choma. Goat choma is one of the delicacies in our nation. It is one of the delicacies in our neighboring nation. I said I come from Uganda, but it's also a delicacy in Kenya, in Nairobi. I hope you enjoy what we are going to cook and I hope when you try it out, you can share with me. So for the ingredients, you need some fresh goat's meat. And here is my goat's meat. I have frozen it so that I can cut it well. If you do not have a good cutter and you want to cut, if you do not have a bone saw or something like that and you want your beef or your meat to have a very nice definite cut, you freeze it first. So that is what I have done. And this is just half a kilo of goat's meat. I got half a kilo because I want it to feed just about four people. So when you finish to cut it, then you are going to get a garlic clove, you know, just one garlic clove. This is one garlic clove. And you are going to either use a garlic press or you are going to use your grater and you are going to put, you're going to grate this garlic onto the goat's meat. So here we go. Please make it one garlic clove. I know some of us love the garlic, so you might want to do more, but just make it one garlic clove. It's usually very good to make sure you, 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 you touch under your grater to pick up any garlic. And then get a ginger, root fresh ginger, one inch, okay, you see that? And then you also grate it in. This is to help soften, the ginger helps to soften your goat's meat, but also it gives it a very nice flavor. So flavor and softening, okay? Making it tender. So flavor and tenderizing. That's what that does. And then to add just a little more flavor, we have one red onion. Not too big, not too small. Like the fist of a baby, okay? Like the fist of a baby, okay? Now we are putting a bit more onion than the others because and the onion gives a much better flavor, but it also helps you to be able to fight off any effects of the garlic. Okay, so we have finished to do that. So we get our pan, okay, the cooking pot that we are going to use, and we place all of that in the cooking pot together with a tablespoon of salt. So I first try to rub it in. Why I'm rubbing it in is I want my garlic and my onion and my ginger to get to each of my pieces of God. Now, you may not be able to get this, but when you write to me or when you get someone who travels here, they could get it for you. I manufacture spices. Uni's Kitchen manufactures spices. We have spices for meat. So this is called a meat curry spice. But we also have a legume spice. Can you imagine? We have a spice for your beans, your peas. Can you imagine? We have a spice for that and it's also good for vegetables. So usually, this is one of my secret weapons. If you can get it. That would be beautiful. So I usually put a bit of our meat curry spice in the pot. It is quite concentrated. So what I mean by a bit is more like a teaspoon. So you see that? That is how it is supposed to be. And then finally, you just get a, a piece of pineapple. Just 
a small piece of pineapple, you know, just like that. And you also grate it in. This makes it even more tender, but it also gives it a good sweet taste. Okay, it tenderizes and gives it a good taste. So you wrap that in also. So you see, I first put the salt and rubbed it in and I put the other ingredients and rubbed it in so the pineapple is just like a jacket on top. So that is what we have. Remember after grating, even the pieces of pineapple that stayed in my hands, I put them in. So when you do that, you just cover it and you let it stand for just about 10 minutes. Okay, so what's happening is because we've let it stand, we are giving the ingredients an opportunity to infiltrate deep into our goat's meat. Now, if you can do that even overnight, the better. But for overnight, don't put the pineapple in immediately because the pineapple is going to really crush it and it will be too tender. So if you want to do it overnight, don't put the pineapple. If you want to do that first step that I've done and you let it sit in your refrigerator overnight, don't put the pineapple. Put the pineapple 10 minutes before you start cooking it in the morning. So now our 10 minutes are done. And so what we are going to do is we are going to put two cups of water. Just your, your normal kitchen water. Of course, for good measure, if you do, you can put stock, okay? If you have some beef stock, that is even better. Let's see what's in our pot. So you see that? So everything, the two cups of water, the goat's meat, the salt, the pineapple, that secret ingredients, the Eunice meat curry spice. If you do not have it, you've put a mixed uh, spice. And then we have the onion and the ginger and the garlic. So we want it to boil until water has run dry. So while our goat is boiling, I want us to prepare the vegetables that we are going to use. So I'm just going to cut my carrots long and thin. Okay. So there are my carrots. When they are cut long like this, in Czech language, we call it julienne. We say that the carrots are julienne. So then I'm going to cut my red bell paper. I want to cut it in cubes. I have the orange from the carrot. I have the red from the, bell, the red bell paper. So these are my vegetables so far. Now I'm going to put just half of the green paper fresh from the garden. And I'm keeping this for stock. In Uganda, we are blessed. We have lots of these vegetables fresh off the market. I've made just half of this so that it will not dominate my pan, my vegetable. I want it to just be a little dot in the vegetables. And then finally, I'm going to do half of a red onion. Now, you can add as many vegetables, but these are the ones that I have chosen to use. Okay? So with this one, I also just want them to be uh, sort of like cubes. Eh? So I'm slicing them big and then I'm just separating them. You see what I'm doing? I'm just separating them. Just slice and separate. So here are our vegetables. We are going to need butter, lots of it. And we are going to need a balsamic vinegar. This is going to give it the best oomph. Oh, I like it. I like balsamic vinegar. It's going to give it a really, really nice flavor. Now, if you do not have our curry, because like I said, we have a legume curry that is also really, really good on vegetables, you can use uh, mustard powder. So you can use mustard powder to do what we are going to do. But in Uganda, those who are in Uganda, those who are near us, you can actually order your curry and we can get it to you. So we are going to go over to our stove with our vegetables and we are going to cook it. Do we? Mmm, it smells nice. Yes. You see, as when it starts to shrink, because remember the pieces were really big, 
but it is starting to shrink. It shows that it is getting ready. We can see it coming off the bone. When that happens, you know you're doing well, okay? So it's, it's, it's going good. And it's almost, the water's about to run dry. So I'm just using a griddle pan to grill my vegetables and I'm drying it with a kitchen towel. So I'm using salted butter and I'm, for good measure, I'm using a whole stick, which would be about, I'm using about two tablespoons because I want a lot of butter. So the heat needs to be low and before all of it melts, you put your next vegetable. So I'm putting my onion in the butter. So that is complete. the completion of the melting happens when my onion is already in. So I fry it for about a minute just for it to become aromatic. And now this is the point at which if you have herbs, you can actually put some herbs, fresh herbs. I don't have some herbs today, so I'm not going to put any, but you can put fresh herbs, a fresh herb of choice. You see the butter is quite a lot, and I want my onion to be able to soak it in. So I fry until my onion becomes transparent, and then I put my green and the red bell paper in. Don't you see the colors are looking beautiful? I think the colors are really good. So I sprinkle just a little bit of salt. Okay. And then now I'm going to put my carrot. And I'm going to sprinkle my legion curry. You can still use your mixed spice or another spice. Uh, I would actually recommend just a dash of cinnamon. Okay. So we are going to let them roast a bit. And we are going to put our vinegar in towards the end. Let's see how what is doing. Mm, see, the waters are running dry. That is so nice and beautiful. So let's see our roast vegetables. You see that? They are roasting really well. They are actually roasted. So this one is ready. We just need to wait to serve it. So I'm in the frying pan. And I'm going to pour some vegetable cooking oil halfway the pan. Go ahead and check on our pot. The waters have run dry. Did I say it serves for? <laughs> I think we are going to serve only two people with this because it can be quite delicious. And you can actually cut bigger pieces than this if you want to. So we are now going to season it so that we can deep fry it. So in our country, we have this that you can use to season. I've put just two teaspoons of it. And then, I know this is a gravy powder, but we want to give this uh, goat a nice coating. So you can put just a teaspoon of it. Now, in countries where you can't get uh, this, you can put only these two teaspoons of this. And then you can get a curry powder of choice. I'm using what we have in our country. That, and I'm putting just a teaspoon of it. And then we just mix it up because what we are doing is we are forming a coating. We coat it really well. And now we are going to deep fry it after coating it. So now when your oil is ready, you put your goat in. Remember, it's coated with all those beautiful ingredients. Mm. 
So we fry it until it's golden brown. So when you check and your goat chuma is ready, you put it on a kitchen towel to dry. So I want you to just zoom in and look clearly at the picture of your chuma and see my expectation of the dish. The brown needs to be that, not just golden, but that rich. I hope you can see. I hope you can all see. And so we are going to serve this. But before we serve it, I want us to finish off our roast vegetables by adding a dash of the balsamic vinegar. So just add a dash of it, probably just a tablespoon of it. Before we go ahead to serve it, gives it a really nice flavor. Mm. So we are now ready to serve our roast vegetables. And I'm going to chum up. That's our dish for today. I hope you really enjoy it. I enjoy it every time I make it. If you really, really love your gut, you can cut the pieces big, but I enjoy my chuma. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. So tender, nicely spiced, and you can eat it on a Friday evening when you just want to do a roast, but also sometimes I do this for breakfast, brunch, and things like that. It really fills you and it's really a nice meal. Thank you very much. You can like my YouTube channel where I teach on business, but soon I will also be doing dishes to just teach cookery. You can like it. You can ask so many of your friends. You can invite many of your friends to like it. And I'm sure you're going to learn a lot of cookery from me. Until next time, you Bye bye.